Okay, folks, it's time for our annual Call of Duty reveal. This time around, it's Call of Duty World War Two. There we are, showing us all the stuff that happened in World War Two. That big old war had some British people in it, had some American people in it. Probably more Americans than British people in this one. That would be my guess. Could be wrong. I don't know, he's American. I wondered if I'd be proven wrong. I've not seen the trailer yet. I've started saving trailers now to watch them live. Oh, there's a British one. Typical British Call of Duty voice. They all sound like that. They all sound like that. Talking with gaps in their sentences for dramatic effect. All right, lots of explosions. Got hit by a bell, falling, more falling, flamethrower. Actually an inefficient weapon, as they found out in World War II where they did deploy them. Useful for terror tactics. You know, a flamethrower's fucking scary. It's a psychological weapon. But as an actual weapon intended to... Oh, that was brutal. Lieutenant, tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult. If there is a mission too difficult, I will turn it off. I'll just turn it off and stop playing. Welcome to the bloody first. You know what? I'm sick of the first. The bloody first. All right, that's Call of Duty World War Two. Everything old is new again. So we've got a release date. Now and get access to the private beta. Is that a secret character? Oh, you meant a private beta, not private beta. I see. Did you see that? That was a fun joke I made. <laughs> All right, so Call of Duty WW2. All right. It, it'll be another Call of Duty game, just in World War II, which we've seen already many times, but because we've had the modern warfare, then the science fiction warfare for so long, this feels fresh. Uh, it's similar to the whole Battlefield 1 thing, except Battlefield 1 went to World War 1, so it was a bit different than, than World War 2 again. Uh, but I've said for years now, I mean, funnily enough, I think I was... I think I was still at Detroit, which you'll notice is my marker for a fucking long time ago. I was still at Destructoid when I, I think I penned an article saying, you know what, like, Nazis feel new again as video game enemies. I mean, they feel fucking current now as video game enemies. But yeah, years and years and years ago, uh, I'd said that the, the modern military shooter was getting really old to the point where, you know what, if we went to the Pacific Theatre again or Europe or, or fucking pushing Russia or whatever you want to do, right, in World War II, that would feel interesting again. And here we are, years and years later, and Call of Duty got the memo. Uh, I think maybe they ran out of ways to sci-fi up Call of Duty without turning it into a different game. Because it's been almost impressive how they've managed to take a game across wildly different timelines now and still make them feel basically the effing same. Uh, I would say that Infinite Warfare was a step up from the past ones. And bear in mind, I mostly talk about campaigns here. Uh, I do play the multiplayer. I've, you know, I used to like Call of Duty multiplayer a lot, but more and more as, as it became all about the perks and the microtransactions, I stopped giving a fuck. Uh, to the point where in the Infinite Warfare one, I literally started the review, I think, by pointing out I'm not even bothering with the multiplayer this time. I gave it a go, fucking hated it, and, you know, sue me if you think there's a problem with that. I mean, don't sue me, I don't need another one. It's a minority opinion, I think, but not a totally unusual one to be more interested in Call of Duty's campaign. When Call of Duty is at its best, some of those story campaigns are really fucking good. You know, stylishly presented, very well directed, set pieces, etc. Uh, some of them actually have interesting stories and characters, believe it or not. Like, not the deepest, most fleshed out stories and characters, but interesting, likeable, 
uh, something you can get invested and involved in. Uh, uh, but recently they've kind of... Eh, it's been so by the book. Uh, I think the last, the last, the last Call of Duty I genuinely fully enjoyed. I think the last Call of Duty game I properly loved was like Black Ops Three. I, uh, no, no, two. I think Black Ops Two. Infinite Warfare was a pretty good one. Uh, certainly the best one they've done in years. And it, f fucking hell, it wasn't Ghosts or anything like that. Utter mediocrity. So I'm willing to give this a chance. Uh, my main issue is that Activision, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, all that lot, they can put out a really good trailer, but most of the time once you get the game in your hands, it doesn't matter how different they've made it look, it still feels the same thing to play. So I'm expecting it to just look and feel like Call of Duty again, just with more obsolete shit in it in terms of weaponry and vehicles. Fingers crossed it's something more brilliant than that. I will approach this with, I mean, I'll say this much for the series. At the very least, they've managed to keep me coming back out of at least curiosity. I am not so burnt out and cynical on the idea of Call of Duty that I've stopped giving the series chances. Uh, so there's that, there's that, they're at least good enough to pull me back in even if they can't keep me there for more than a day or two once I get there. And i got to point this out again, fuck Modern Warfare Remastered. It's just worth bringing up every single time that Activision held a remaster to ransom, put microtransactions in it when there were none before, and then re-released a DLC for it outside of the actual remaster and sold it at a price higher than its original MSRP. Uh, that I'm going to bring up, I think, every single time I talk about Call of Duty, at least until I do the post-mortem episode on Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, which will be at a later date. And I will probably keep bringing it up after that as well, because really Activision was beyond the fucking pale with that. And I think every time Call of Duty comes up now, every time Activision is trying to sell us a new card, we should be mindful of what it did. Also, Activision is going to content ID this video, so I might as well give them a proper slagging off. They'll content claim this, they'll uphold the claim, so they can shove it up their fucking holes. Whatever holes they have to piss out of, they can go right up there. And if they don't piss out of a hole, then up the arse. Most of us have got an arsehole. Just a hole, actually. I mean, prioritise, prioritise the one you piss out of. Second, your shithole. Then, if you've got no options other than that, uh, something, a nose or an ear. I mean, you've got to have something. You're not a fucking stone. Actually, if you are an Activision executive, you probably are a stone. <laughs> no, 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 no. That doesn't deserve the maximum sass. That wasn't a very good one. That was about... Call of Duty Ghosts level good.